This is the Elevate, Honda's first entry into the mid-size SUV segment. Except it's not, is it? You might remember the BRV from 2016, a car that frankly didn't do so well. So why am I bringing up that SUV? Well, because it's key to understanding this SUV. See, where that car was based on a Mobilio MPV, this car has been developed from the grounds up with Indian customers in mind. It's a very important model for Honda and I'm here in Rajasthan to drive it for you. But first, back to the BRV, which as you might remember, offered three rows of seats and was the largest and most spacious SUV in the segment. It was comfortable, high quality and drove well, but it failed to win over buyers solely because of how it looked. Which was to say, like a cladded up MPV, not a proper SUV. In fact, almost all of Honda's SUVs have leaned more to the crossover side with low roofs, curvy styling and less than average ground clearance. Not the Elevate, and Honda certainly seems to have learned its lesson. It is tall, square, boxy and has a class-leading 220mm of ground clearance. In fact, that's the highest ground clearance of any Honda SUV. The tall bonnet rises above waist level and ends in a cliff-like nose with a huge black plastic grille area crowned by a winged chrome piece that flows into the LED projector headlamps. The front end is so tall they fitted vertical fog lamp housings and lower down you'll find a four skid plate too. Chunky mirrors spawn from the front doors and muscular wheel arches push out from the flanks. The thick cladding around those arches show off that ground clearance and smart 17-inch wheels and tyres sit inside them. A body-coloured trim piece gives relief below the doors as does a window line that kinks up into an optional contrast-coloured roof. And round the back, the look is clean with a slight rake to the roof line, part LED tail lamps and a heavily cladded rear bumper. The proportions are those of a classic upright two-box SUV, which gives it excellent road presence despite the relatively understated design. Before we go any further, what do you think about the Elevate? Do you like it a bit late to the party or right on time? Tell us down in the comments to tell us if you'd pick it over any of its many, many rivals. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to stay subscribed to Autocar India. Before we hop into the car, let's quickly head around the back to look at the luggage area. At 458 litres, this is a class-leading boot. As you can see, it takes one travel bag very easily. The loading lip is not too high and of course, it can take a whole lot more if you want it. And if you need more space, the back seats fold 60-40 split. And underneath here, there is still room for a steel wheel space saver spare tyre. And the packaging wizards at Honda haven't stopped there because despite that class-leading boot, there's loads of passenger space too. Now, Honda says that the Elevate's back seat, in most dimensions at least, is class-leading. And at least in terms of knee room and headroom, I think they might be right. This scoop frees up a lot of headroom and this seat is in my position. I'm just under 5'8 and I think I have plenty of space. There's also the nice foot tray to rest your feet on at a slight elevated angle, don't mind me saying, but I think that the sense of space and the width isn't perhaps quite as much as some rivals. That sense of space is perhaps dampened a little bit by the fact that you don't get a panoramic sunroof, just a single pane one. But that said, the windows are nice and long and large, even though the windowsill is quite high. The seat comfort, however, is just superb. They've judged the positioning and the cushioning just right. It's not quite in the same league as the city. You'd still get that rather low set armrest like the city, but it's still plenty comfortable, especially in terms of lumbar support, which they've engineered in really, really well. The seat has a slight hump in the center, so center passengers might not be as comfortable as the two outer ones. They've given it adjustable headrests, unlike the city this time, but there is no central headrest and the center passenger only gets a lap belt, which is a little bit disappointing. Now, in terms of creature comforts back here, yes, there are rear AC vents, but no blower control. Similarly, there is a 12-volt charging socket, but no USB ports. And I would have liked to see rear sun blinds over here on the windows. There is, however, a nice nifty pocket here for your cell phone. Now, time to move to the front of the cabin where the restraint from the exterior design is carried over. There's a lot to unpack in the front seat of the Honda Elevate. And let's start with the dashboard design, which is 
pleasantly uncluttered elegant and a little bit understated now that might not be for you especially given the more flamboyant designs that have come out lately but i quite like it i think it gives a bit of an old school luxury feel especially with this four wood effect and the leatherette trim with the cross stitching on the dashboard that by the way extends to the door pads and the armrests as well and it gives a real feeling of luxury quality on the whole is typically honda high even the hard plastics on top they just feel very very well put together a bit of a shame is the fact that there is a woven roof liner and not a knitted one but that's a small saw point in an otherwise well put together cabin you also get a frameless uh, auto dimming rear view mirror and of course a single pane sunroof the steering wheel is pretty much the same as the honda city with nice controls for everything including the adas features i like that there are physical controls up here for the toggle switches for the auto climate control simplistic but well functioning ac vents a wireless phone charger two usb ports unfortunately not usb-c just usb type a a 12 volt socket and the wireless charger and the cup holders are not interchangeable like they are in the city this time which is a big relief there's also a small cubby hole here manual handbrake and a reasonably sized storage bay under here the other revelation is this slick new 10.25 inch touchscreen which is a big revelation for honda it's the biggest one they fit in india yet it's very slick to operate. It has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a few physical buttons which help you through the shortcuts. It doesn't feel like an aftermarket unit like some of the older Honda ones did and it looks very well integrated. Trouble is, for as well as it works, it doesn't pack in a whole lot. There's no native navigation system nor many sub-menus and what you see on the homepage is basically what you get. You can keep the rear or side camera active on the screen which is cool and you can even add a central widget for music. Speaking of which, though it doesn't carry any fancy branding, the 8-speaker sound system is rather good. The other thing is the part digital instrument cluster. Now, it's very neat, very tidy and holds a lot of functions, but I can understand that some might find it a little bit too simplistic and lacking that flash value of the full digital screens or even the other part digital screens available in the market. But what do you think about the interior? Let us know down in the comments. For me, the highlight has got to be this seat. Honda does seats just so well and this one is incredibly supportive, incredibly comfortable, although I do wish it was power adjusted. I also wish the front seats were ventilated which is another feature rivals offer. And really the elevates features list is one that is good but doesn't match up to the high standards set by competitors. Other things missed are a panoramic sunroof, drive modes and an electronic parking brake. But it does get a wireless charger, part digital dials, wireless carplay and android auto, remote engine start, connected car tech, and paddle shifters for the auto gearbox. On the safety front, there are six airbags, vehicle stability assist, ISOFIX child seat mounts, and Honda sensing ADAS tech, which we'll get to in a bit. But while it has a rear and a lane watch camera, it doesn't get 360 degree cameras, and that's a shame. And speaking of safety, it has not yet been tested by any independent crash testing body like Global NCAP, but Honda is not opposed to the idea. In fact, it's confident of a good score because, after all, its last-gen models, the Jazz and the Gen 4 City, scored four stars in the old regime of GN cab tests. And with that, let's get the Elevate out on the road because I'm curious about what the highest-riding Honda ever is like to drive. Now, as you can probably see, it's absolutely coming down here in Udaipur today. The roads are in a terrible state and there's standing water everywhere. And I don't think there's a better test of an SUV's metal than that. So let's see how the elevator holds up. The first impression is Honda has made a concerted effort to get out of its crossover past and into its SUV future. That's because you're sat nice and high up. The view out in all directions is just superb, visibility is great and stretching out in front of me is an absolutely horizontal bonnet and isn't that so SUV. Even the big touchscreen, it doesn't impede your view too much. It's got big mirrors but they don't create a blind spot because there's enough of a view between the A-pillar and the mirror to see what's going on in that gap over there. The next thing we have to talk about is the suspension. At 220mm, the ground clearance is not just class leading, it's a benchmark for Honda themselves. And the engineers admitted to us that they were really stepping out of their comfort zone with that. You see, they always keep their SUVs or crossovers a little bit low to the ground 
to maintain that legendary Honda dynamic capability. I'll get to those dynamics later, but what you need to know is that despite the tall ride height, it feels firmly planted to the road. And here on the highway, cutting through large pools of standing water, I feel incredibly confident, not just in that ground clearance, but in this car's ability to handle it unfazed. There's always a danger with raising the suspension that a car might be made too stiff to compensate. But Honda seems to have nailed it just perfectly. There's a great mix between confidence, suppleness and ride comfort. This is truly a very, very comfortable car. Even as we are crashing through potholes right now, I bet you can't tell. It's just so flat and so composed and you don't even get shocked through the steering wheel. Crucially, like with the tall driving position and visibility, the Elevate suspension setup gives you that sophisticated big SUV feel, which a lot of others in the segment do not. It's not as overtly soft as some others, but then it still manages to take the edge of sharp bumps just fine, while high-speed stability is in another league. Honda truly showing its dynamic genius here. Which brings me on to the steering. It is everything you could ask for in the steering of a mass market car. Never mind an SUV. It's got enough weight, yet it's light enough. It's got precision, it's got directness, and it's got great feedback from the front wheels. And when you combine that with the amazing dynamic setup of the suspension, it's a true return to form for Honda. This feels like a Honda of back in the day. And that's really saying something. However, there's another area where it's maybe a bit too old school. We now have to address the elephant in the room and that is the powertrain. Yes, this car comes with just one engine and it's a naturally aspirated petrol. Rivals offer such engines too, but for all of them, that's merely the entry-level engine, with more powerful options positioned above. In an age of diesels and hybrids and EVs and turbochargers, this just feels incredibly old school. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a very fun engine that enjoys to be revved out. With this CVT, it goes up to about 6,500 RPM. And while that is fun, it's not very practical when you're out here on the highway and just want to make an overtake to get past a truck, maybe. That mid-range whack that you get from a turbocharged engine is simply missing. And while that's less of a problem in a sedan like the City, in an SUV, that's what buyers want and expect. Honda, of course, discontinued diesel earlier this year in the run-up to BS6 Phase 2 emissions norms. And as for why the Elevate doesn't get the City's hybrid powertrain, the brand simply thought it's better to go straight to an EV, which will be coming by 2025. Honda's 1.5-litre iV tech is quite legendary at this point, and it's been retuned a little bit for this car. They've given it a bit more low-down torque to deal with the extra weight, and the CVT has been reworked a little bit too. Speaking of the weight, Honda engineers tell us that spec for spec, it's about 150 kg more than the city on which it's based but it's still light at under 1,300 kg. The result is that there's sufficient grunt low down in the rev range, and this car doesn't feel like it's struggling with all its weight. It does give you that rubber band effect, which is high revs and not a lot of progress. That's typical of a CVT, but I'm happy to report that it recovers from it rather quickly. But perhaps I'm being a bit harsh because it's not all bad. Where this engine absolutely excels is in the city where it's refined, tractable and perfect for just nipping in and out of traffic. Now while Honda didn't bring the hybrid powertrain over from the city to the Elevate, what they did bring across was Honda Sensing ADAS tech. And now that we're on the highway, let's test it out. It requires some conditions to be met like being at a certain speed and reading the lanes just right and once it does, you'll see the lights going green over there. Now it has, it's keeping me in my lane, I can take my hands off the wheel. As we approach the bend up ahead, it should steer for me, which it's doing. And as we approach the car ahead of me, it's slowing down to its speed. Just wait. Car's gone, it's picking up all automatically. And yes, even though this car only uses cameras and not radar to get the job done, I think it works pretty effectively. 
Another handy feature of course that Honda has been using for a little while now is the lane watch camera which activates a camera underneath that mirror, shows you a feed on the screen which helps alleviate a little bit of blind spot stress. Amazingly the weather started to turn nicer as we drove along and I thought that was as good a time as any to switch over to the manual version of the Elevate. If you want far better control over the 1.5i VTEC engine, you've got to have the manual version. As with other Hondas, what you get is a nice, short, stubby, short throw gear lever and a light progressive clutch. And together, these take the work out of shifting manually and let you have as much fun as you want. Now, apart from the retuning that Honda has done to the engine of this car, they've also worked on this six-speed manual gearbox. The first two ratios are much shorter than in the city and that's for better low down response. The result is that there's very little hesitation when starting off and moving around at low speeds and you won't find yourself constantly shifting down when negotiating a slow moving traffic jam for example. And really this engine is a whole lot more fun when you have a manual gearbox and can modulate the revs entirely by yourself. This gearbox is also a great way to showcase how tractable this 1.5i VTEC engine is. So here I am in 5th gear, flat on my foot. Slight hesitation while it gets into its groove. But then it pulls and pulls and pulls. 50, 60, 70. And we're at the speed limit. But it pulls so gamely in any gear that you can really tell that Honda is trying its very best to make up for the lack of a turbocharged engine. Another thing worth mentioning is the fuel economy, which as per ARAI is unusually lower in the manual at 15.3 kpl than in the CVT, which is rated at 16.92 kpl. Those numbers are also lower than some turbocharged rivals too, but typically naturally aspirated petrol engines tend to be more efficient than turbo petrols in the real world. So we'll get back with those figures once we've done our autocar real world fuel efficiency test. And now that we're off the highway and on some smaller, tighter, twistier roads, I think this is a great time to tell you a bit more about the dynamics, which are really, really impressive. Now here's where some of that classic Honda handling magic shines through. As I said before, turn-in is sharp, steering weight is good. But I think what stands out more than any of that is the body control. Honda's gone and done it. They've made a tall car that doesn't roll too much at all. It holds its line admirably no matter what you do with it and how much you push it into the corners. Truly, for a car that's this tall with such high ground clearance, it really doesn't lean that much at all. The brakes are good too and that's despite not having disc brakes at the rear. Now with great power comes the need for great brakes as well and I'm happy to report that the Elevate stops pretty strongly. All of this feels like a return to form for a company that used to make some of the finest handling cars around but which had lately slipped into softer, looser dynamics to appeal to a wider audience. And they've done it in an SUV while retaining the comfort that buyers expect. And really, it is precisely buyer expectations that led to the creation of the Elevate. No longer could Honda ignore this extremely popular and lucrative segment, nor could they afford to take another, let's be honest, shortcut like they did with the old BRV. The Elevate looks like a proper SUV and it gives you that sense from the driver's seat too. The superbly judged suspension setup makes it feel tough and yet comfortable. And let's not forget the 220 mm of ground clearance. And despite all of this, it somehow handles well too, just like an old school Honda. It's just a shame that fun as the iV Tech engine is, there are no stronger engine options available, not even Honda's own strong hybrid. Some also won't like that some popular features haven't made it to the Elevate, like a panoramic sunroof or cooled front seats. But then, like with the city, it's the Elevate's strong fundamentals and not its flash value that will draw in buyers. This is not your typical mid-size SUV that chases a checklist of features. The space, comfort, reliability, elegant design and practicality are what will draw you in. Oh, and the fun handling? That's just a bonus. Pricing of course will be key and we hope Honda can keep things in the 12 to 17 lakh rupee X showroom price bracket, or maybe even lower. If they get that right, this could just be the vehicle to elevate Honda back to the upper end of the sales charts. 
Thank you for watching.